Okay, so what we're going to do here is have a little look at the Corporations Act of 2001, which is an act that banks in Australia claim to be bound by. And we're looking at the definition specifically of providing finance. So we've got three ways here, A, B and C. Now what I specifically want to look at is the third sentence here which looks like a complicated sentence. But if we break it down, we've got five ways drawing, accepting, endorsing, negotiating or discounting. And then the document types, a bill of exchange, check, payment order or promissory note so that someone can obtain funds. So those five different ways applied to four different documents, to me, expands out into 20 different ways that someone can obtain funds. So, for example, we've got endorsing a bill of exchange so that someone can obtain funds. We've got accepting a promissory note so that someone can obtain funds. So one would think that this would be a pretty straightforward exercise to take this document along to a bank or a corporation that provides finance and ask them simply, does part C of providing finance per the Corporations Act of 2001, based on English grammar, expand out into the following 20 ways of providing finance? And if so, then in conjunction with these first two, A and B, would that not end up with 22 ways of providing finance? And of those 22 ways of providing finance, is only one by lending money? Now, would this mean that corporations can provide finance 21 other ways? And of those 21 other ways, does this mean corporations can provide finance without lending money? And if finance can be provided without lending money, is repayment required? They're questions I'd like to be asking of my bank. So how exactly does one provide finance without lending? In the Chicago Plan Revisited, an IMF working paper, it states, Under the present system, banks do not have to wait for depositors to appear and make funds available before they can on-lend. Straight away that tells me that they don't have the money to start with. Now, if the banks don't have the money to start with, where does it come from? Well, they create their own funds in the act of lending. Right, now let's consider the timing involved here. In the act of lending, says to me, not before lending, in the act of lending. And this is reinforced by the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas stating banks create money when they lend it. Not before, when they lend it. So this money creation process appears to take place at the time of lending. Now is that because we need the borrower to participate in this money creation process? The Federal Reserve Bank of New York says commercial banks create checkbook money whenever they grant a loan simply by adding new deposit dollars to accounts on their books in exchange for a borrower's IOU. The key word there to me seems to be exchange. You can't have an exchange without there being two parties. Now we've got the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago stating what they do when they make loans is to accept promissory notes in exchange for credits to the borrower's transaction accounts. Again, we're talking about an exchange. And interestingly enough, how similar is accepting promissory notes in exchange for credits to the Corporations Act, which stated accepting a promissory note so that someone can obtain funds? At one stage, these paper notes used to represent a promise for the bank to pay a certain amount of gold or silver. Now, as soon as you took away the gold and silver, 
what exactly were you left with? I'd say all you were left with is a promise. So we've been trading these promises for how many years as something of value? Banks don't do that, you might say. Well, credit of promissory notes, money of account, become money when banks deposit promissory notes with the intent of treating them as cash. So if banks are treating our promises to pay as cash, would you feel conned or deceived if you were told you received a loan, but the money actually came from the deposit of your promise to pay, which was treated as cash? Now fortunately there's a simple way to determine whether you received a loan, or whether the bank deposited your promise to pay as cash. Because for the bank to have issued a loan, they must have had prior rights, title and ownership to the money that it purported to lend you. Because if it didn't own it, it didn't have title to it, it didn't have rights to it, well, sorry, but they didn't have rights, title or ownership to that money. Now, if you were investing into a private placement program, one of the first things you'd be asked for is the history and origin of the funds that you were investing. They might even ask you for a letter of origin just to make sure you weren't laundering money. So I think uh, that sounds like a pretty wise idea, going back at least three generations that we could ask for from the bank. Right, so just to recap... If a loan was taking place, the bank would actually have the prior rights, title and ownership to the funds. They should be able to produce a letter of origin or a history of funds going back three generations to demonstrate that they weren't creating the money when they lend it. And we now know how they create the money is by accepting the promissory notes in exchange for credits to the borrower's transaction accounts. Or, if we go by the Corporations Act, accepting promissory notes so that someone can obtain funds. So I think that's a pretty good idea to walk into a bank and say, please Mr Bank, can you tell me whether you provided finance by lending money or by one of these other 21 other ways of providing finance? For further information, Go have a look at truth-now.net. Look out for the video bankruptcy. What we've actually had here is criminal activity by bankers and not a single banker has been sent to prison. I'm off to see if my bank will provide me finance. You know, like it says in the Corporations Act.